Okay, guys, today this is the uh, PCM we're going to be talking about here, a 162216588 service number or hardware 161-93570. So this is uh, the PCM used on all of the 6.5 diesel engines, whether it be a van, whether it be a C-truck, a G-van, K-truck, a P conversion van, any of them. They would use this if they had that. So let's talk about where you will find this guy. I've made a couple of printouts come in the service manual here that I thought would be helpful. So here we can see um, a little bit of a view on where you'd find it in a van, right? So right above the engine, if you remove the interior engine cover, you know, the doghouse, you'll find this guy sitting in the in uh, center right below the radio. And he's going to be kind of mounted with a couple of attachments on this bracket like you see here. And you just remove those two nuts that are attaching him and it comes right off after you disconnect him. And I'll, um, you know, if, I'll show you a picture here in a minute of, of a little bit of a difference on these attachment points when you're in a CK truck. And on a CK truck, this is not the best picture that GM had here, but uh, remove the um, uh, glove box and you'll find this guy sitting right up here. Here's the blower motor, right? He's just sitting right up here. And instead of being attached by bolts, he's kind of like a, a snap-in attachment. And I'll, I'll put a picture like over here to show what it looks like a little bit closer with those attachment differences. And so when you go into the salvage yard and you're picking one of these guys out, the most important thing is to make sure that you get the right part numbers. And then after you get the right part numbers, don't be so concerned about these mounts because you can actually take these out, right? They, they fit into these attachment points. And there's actually uh, a couple of different styles. And I'll show you, like I said, I'll show you that earlier in the photo. The next thing you want to check when you get one of these guys is you want to uh, make sure that all of these connections are in really good shape interior wise. So no corrosion and no damage, no missing pins. That's one of the first things you want to do as you pull the plugs out. You know, there's a possibility something might have gotten damaged. And then you just want to take a general look at the overall health of the case. Uh, you know, no massive dents or damage. It might indicate that the inside electronics might have been compromised. And so if it passes that kind of test, then you're kind of okay to begin the next level of test, which is an electrical test. So let me talk to you about that now. So we're going to actually hook up uh, a cable. It turns out that, you know, you just need this blue connection over here on the side uh, to get this going. You don't actually need the other two cavities. And you'll be able to, what I've done here is, you know, I just kind of wired in a, a DLC connector so that I can connect my Tech 2 scan tool. And we can take a look at this guy and we can program him and reflash him and change the VIN. We've gotten all the uh, positive and uh, ground wires pulled together. And then we've got a switch in here to connect our pink ignition feeds over to our power when needed during the programming step. And I'll show you a little bit of a view from the service manual on that as well. So when you're trying to take a look at the uh, DLC connector, the data link connector, uh, what you're going to be interested in here is uh, number two here is a purple wire. This is the actual uh, class two serial data transfer that the tech two is going to need to work with. You've got a couple of grounds on pins four and five, a black and a black and white that you want to run out. And then finally, you want to run out power on 16, which is an orange. And that'll complete uh, the connection at this guy so that you have a connection to, to hook up this tech, the Tech 2. And then for actually communicating with the PCM, like I said, it's just that one C3 connector. And on that, what we're interested in is, again, we're interested in the uh, Class 2 communications, which is a purple wire and cavity C8. And then we're interested in these two ignition feeds on cavity C11 and C12. They're both pink. And then we're interested in the battery feed on cavity 13, and it's orange. So down near the bottom here, there's a couple others that we're interested in, which are the ground lines on cavity D6 and D7. One's black and white, and one's tan and white. And that's it, right? These other lines all are part of the inputs on this particular connector to the PCM, but they're not needed in order for us to talk to it or to, uh, you know, read it with the Tech 2 or to program it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run over from a, a bench power supply now. I'm just going to connect up our ground connections and our battery connections, if you will. And we're going to be running this off of a 12-volt feed, which I'm going to power on right now. And then I'm going to take a Tech 2, kind of bring that into view here. 
and we're going to wire it up. So we're going to bring a Tech 2 over here and we're going to give that a connection onto our DLC connection and then fire this guy up. And as soon as he powers up, what we'll end up doing here is we'll go into diagnostics and we'll build the vehicle for this particular PCM. So we're going to go into diagnostics and this particular PCM, although it fits any of those six fives, we're just going to build the original vehicle here. It came out of a 97 uh, truck class. We're going to look at powertrain. We're going to come down here and we're going to go with that F and it came out of a G van and it had an automatic. And then we're going to take a look at ID information. And what this is going to be able to let us do, we can take a look at the calibration ID on this particular PCM. Up, oh, we forgot to turn the ignition key on. So let's do that. And now we get a read of a calibration of 9389125. And we'll be able to check that here in just a minute using the uh, scan tool software TIS 2000. Whoops, knocked the camera there. Thought about that, guys. Trying to get us a little better view for you. And then if I come out of this and I take a look at the VIN, we can see the VIN of the donor vehicle that's married to this particular PCM. And that's one of the things we're going to be changing. So we're going to be changing it from this 05, excuse me, excuse me, 035414 to the other vehicle that we're going to be putting this into. All right, some other things that you can do to kind of check this out. There's not a whole lot you can do because there's nothing really connected live. We can take a look at the data display, and even though there are no sensors there, we can make sure that we're able to communicate with the PCM and that we're able to at least see data being fed back. And some of this data would be valid, like the 5 volts is probably a number that's correctly calculating. The other stuff, I'm sure it's just, you know, random data since there's no sensor inputs at all. But we can take a look down here and see if we're getting ignition voltage and we are of 11.5 11.6 kind of fluctuating there so at least we know we have a good feeling that this PCM is not dead and somewhat working so now we're going to go proceed to the step of hooking it up to TIS 2000 with the Tech 2 um, updating the calibration and changing the VIN so let's take a look at that all right guys the setup we've got here is we've still got our PCM hooked up to our uh, harness here on the bench we still got our Tech 2 connected up to it, and we still have our bench power supply feeding in 12 volts. And we've got our Tech 2 sitting over here powered off, and we're going to get ready for the next step. As preparation for that, we've got our communications line plugged into the side of our Tech 2. And we've got a Tech Line terminal, if you will, uh, all set up here and loaded up with TIS 2000. And that's what we're going to be switching over to here. All right, guys, when you get to this part of the screen, you're going to select the service programming system right here in the middle. This is basically the part of the tech line information system that's used to flash the module, like in this case a PCM. We're going to select pass through and how we're connecting the tool, and we're going to re select replace and program an ECU. And then we're going to select offboard programming adapter since we got all this stuff hooked up on the bench. Then we're going to go next. And then at that point, we're going to build the vehicle. It's kind of like a mini version of what we saw earlier when we were checking out the PCM using the Tech 2. So we're going to do a 97 light duty truck. It's a Chevrolet Express and it runs diesel. And then we're going to go to the next screen. So at this point, it's telling us to make sure we've got all of our connections and we already have our connection to the Tech 2, the serial cable. And so at this point, we're going to turn the Tech 2 on. And what they're talking about with this Tech 2 start screen is that very first screen that comes up after the power on self test which is right here that's the start screen so at this point we can go ahead and hit next now if we even on the bench but also of course in a regular setup with the vehicle if we're switching a, a PCM, we might take the old one out and put the new one in, or we might unplug the old one and plug the new one in. In this case, we're just going to use the one we've got here and leave it as is. And I've put the ignition switch in the on position on our little wiring harness. 
So we got a little red light down here in the bottom. If I can just maybe get this a little lower for you guys. Right down there at the very bottom corner of the screen in the lower right, there's a little red light. And that'll turn green when it's able to read the VIN. And so this is the VIN that it read off the current PCM. Now this is not the VIN we want to program it to. So we're now going to enter the VIN we want to program it to. So we're going to change this from a 1035414. We're going to change this to a 1GAHG39. Whoops. F 4Y and now it's going to be 1249732. All right, so 1GAHG 39F4 Y12 49732. That's our new VIN for this PCM. So once we do that, we can go in. It's going to go ahead and go through the Tech 2 and talk to the PCM. We're going to tell it that the module we're going to be working with here is the PCM, or it also could be a VCM if it's an older vehicle, but in this case it's a PCM. This is powertrain control module, and this is vehicle control module. And we're going to select programming type normal. VCI is really only something the dealer would use because you'd have to get a special f number from uh, AC Delco TDS to do anything with that. So. We're going to go ahead and leave it normal and go next. It's going to come up here and it's going to build our options. So it's saying right now that the, the newest calibration available is 09391905. So that's, you know, you, you always want to take the latest. Even if you had something older previously, you always want to take the latest. So we're going to take the latest and move forward. It's just kind of confirming what we're doing. Say next again. At this point, it's going to start the reprogramming. So what we see on the screen is that it says it's starting the reprogramming. It's got a progress meter here, and then it's got, you know, zero bytes out of 90,112 that it needs to do. And then what we see on the Tech 2 screen is we see this little symbol here, which indicates that there's communication between the PC and the Tech 2 while it goes ahead and downloads this information. So right now the Tech 2 is just being used as an intermediary, a pass-through as we go through. We'll also notice down here in the lower right that our new VIN was updated as intended right down here on the bottom row of the information. I don't know if you guys can make that out. It's very small text. I can barely make it out. But this guy's chugging along. It's not much uh, content to these older diesel PCMs. So it should go here in just a few seconds. And at that point, it's done. And on the Tech 2, we basically just see it wrapping up the communications. And now it's done. It's back to the start screen. And it tells us here at the end that we might need to do a crankshaft position variation relearn procedure. But otherwise, it doesn't give us any other uh, work to do. It tells us basically we can disconnect the controller and install it in the vehicle. So at that point, we have successfully done two things here. We've uh, reflashed the latest calibration to the device, and we've changed the VIN number. So back here on our setup, if we move away from our PC and we come over here and we look at our setup again, make sure it takes that. We're going to actually turn. We're going to basically simulate turning the ignition key off, and we're going to leave it off for 30 seconds. This is what I always recommend you do, even if it's in the vehicle. We'll leave the ignition key off for 30 seconds, and then what we'll do is we'll turn it back on for 30 seconds before we power things off. And then what we'll do here is we'll go ahead, we'll go through that cycle of, power, uh, of powering up back off and on, and we'll read from our Tech 2 scan tool and see what VIN we get. Okay, folks, let's verify our work. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to go back into our Tech 2, go back into Diagnostics going to rebuild this vehicle. Turns out it's still going into a 97 for the case of this example I'm doing here. I'm just keeping it simple. I'm going to keep it the same type of vehicle. It's a turbo diesel, so it's uh, code F. It's still a van, so it's code G, automatic. We're going to come down here and look at our ID information. We can see our calibration ID. If we can just remember to keep that ignition key turned on. 
939-1905. And the VIN is now our new VIN of 1249732. So at this point, you know, we've gotten this guy updated the way we want to have him updated. All right, guys, let me show you now going in the other direction. Let's go back into SPS. We've got everything connected. We're going to go back in just like we did before. And what we're going to do is change it back to the previous VIN. And what I'm going to show you is that um, this particular vehicle, and I'm going to build it uh, the same way I did before. Technically, I guess I could use the, the build of the target vehicle, which is a VIN off a of 2000 GVN, but it doesn't really matter. Um, here we're going to make sure everything's connected, that we got the right voltage. Let me just adjust the camera here a little bit, just so this whole thing is in view. And then we've got our Tech 2 sitting on the start screen again. And we've got our serial cable connected. We're all ready to go. Got our ignition turned on. Waiting for our red light to turn green down here. It's always a good sign when you get the um, hourglass at this stage. You've got communication showing up on the Tech 2. There's our VIN. Now we're going to change it to what we had before. We're going to change it back to... 1GC HG 35 F4 V103 5414. And now, if we proceed to the next screen with our old VIN, Tech 2 will talk to the PCM. We're going to do a normal update. And now look at this. We've got a different set of calibrations. So, you know, we never showed the calibrations for the original uh, VIN. And so each VIN may have different calibrations with the same PCM because in the TIS database, that VIN's associated with particular options, a particular transmission option, and a particular set of accessories. And so in this case, there's actually, um, and, and also a, a year, right? Because the this VIN is for a 97 and the VIN we were looking at that we were targeting putting this PCM into was a 2000. So even though the same PCM is used in different years, there can be different calibrations involved. So now we'll just overwrite what we did and put it to the latest level for the 1997 application. So we took this PCM, we uh, updated it for the VIN for the target car that it was going into that we you know we pulled it out of a salvage yard 97 we were going to put it into a 2000 and now we're going to reprogram it back to the latest calibration that was used in 97 and also pick up uh, changing the VIN back to what we had in the first place so we'll let this guy chug along take about seven eight or so seconds I think we remember from last time at the halfway point Still the 90,112 bytes, regardless of what calibration that we've picked here for this particular type of PCM. And again, all during the time this is going, you'll see these symbols on the Tech 2 letting you know that everything's working and nothing's dead, even it sh if it should happen to pause on this particular page here on the PC. So it should be wrapping up. There it is, it's done. Now in this case, we didn't get any specific instructions. So we can close that back. So now let me set the camera up and uh, take a look at this particular PCM's data on the Tech 2. All right, guys, let's take a look at what we've got here with what we just reflashed. So we'll come back in here now. We'll rebuild this guy. Oops. Our train, come down to the F for the 6.5 liter. Still a G-Van, still automatic. ID information. Calibration ID now is 9389125. Nine, and our VIN is back to 103.54.14. Again, we did that 30 seconds off on the uh, ignition switch simulation here to get there. And then, you know, I made a comment earlier when I was reading off when we went to the first VIN you know, the TIS came up, TIS 2000 came up and said, hey, you might need to do a crankshaft variation relearn. That doesn't apply to diesels, right? That's just for gas engines. It's just a spurious message or a generic message. You can see here there's no such thing on a on a diesel engine to, to run anyway. So um, 
I hope this helps you out with understanding what you can do here and how you can do it. Let's take a look at a view from the service manual here for a moment on what we would do in the case of these 6.5 liter diesels when we do the PCM replacement. And we see here, after programming the PCM, the only things we need to be concerned about is the possibility of having to do a pass lock learn procedure. So this is reacquainting the security system with the new PCM and programming the TDC offset. So there's no crankshaft variation relearn procedure uh, for the diesel, but there is a top dead center offset procedure that needs to be run. And so, you know, they, they go through the service manual uh, covering how to remove and how to install this. And then just as we already did earlier in this video, how we would go about the actual programming step and, and making sure that you have good battery connection. So let me just show you briefly also on the Tech 2 uh, what that TEC offset procedure looks like. We would start in the special functions section of the Tech 2 on building this diesel vehicle. And then after we go into special functions, we go into engine output controls. And then from engine output controls, we go into injection pump. And then we would see the TDC learn procedure down here. And if you go into that procedure, it'll put you into a, a, uh, a state where you can see what that TDC offset currently is. And you would be able to then go in and learn a new one. Uh, something else I wanted to highlight that I realized that I didn't mention earlier, if we go back a moment to what we were showing here on the wiring of this uh, interface, one of the things I forgot to correctly mention here is there's also a battery uh, connection that I use, D13, orange wire right here. I should have highlighted that guy when we were going over the uh, C3 connection earlier. That would be this, uh, this blue guy right over here on the side. So I hope this helps you out. If you found this useful, you learned something, go ahead and give us a like button below. If you think this kind of content is something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. Otherwise, thanks for watching.